Welcome back to On Track GP, where the big news is hold the champagne for Max Verstappen because he is not starting on pole tomorrow and might not break the record for 10 consecutive wins because who's in his way? Carlos Sainz! <laughs> Finally, I have something to be happy about as a Ferrari fan. I'm joined by Coylan. Coylan, overall, what did you make of that fantastic qualifying session? Yeah, well, as ever, like Monza, it was just pure excitement. All three, all three uh, sessions were fantastic, particularly yeah. the end there, because with Leclerc and then Verstappen beating them, I thought, well, this is it, here we go again. But uh, science came through and delivered. Well, look, let's get to, to Q3 shortly, but talking about, um, I mean, let's let's go firstly to, to Alpine, which, again, very, very poor. After Gasly going and getting a podium last week to now he's going to be starting 19th and Ocon behind him in 20th. Yikes. Yeah, it's it's tricky for Alpine. They've been they've been in the news lately that they've been talking about the freezing of the development of the engines, and a lot of the teams are saying, well, you know, we don't understand because Alpine are pushing to continue because they say they have a def deficit with their engines, but uh, you know, a lot of teams are saying we can't see it, we we don't understand where it's coming from. But I think it's pretty clear with their with their pace and their performance today at Monza, which is obviously the fastest circuit on the calendar, that they are struggling a little bit. I know Ocon had damage from being in the gravel, but Gasly, yeah. that was a it's, really it's, just, bad. it's just bizarre that that gas needs to go from a podium last week to starting 19th we also lost a very disappointing large stroll who just you know it's consistently disappointing us to be honest at the minute yeah it's it's, it's funny with stroll because you know you see alonso up there and he's constantly top five i think he was fifth or sixth again at the end and uh yeah you know, it's really funny it just it kind of just goes to show the characteristics of those two drivers and the real difference between them yeah it's strange because with the car was never going to be quite as quick as other cars uh, here, the Aston Martin, but you absolutely expect it to be getting at least into Q2, if not Q3. So I think he'll be very disappointed. Uh, and the last two drivers to lose out uh, in the first qualifying session were Kevin Magnussen and Joe Guan Yu, Nico Hülkenberg just sneaking through. So let's look now into Q2. This is where it started to get a bit spicy, a bit interesting. We started didn't, didn't know who we were going to keep, who we were going to lose. The standout for me, I think the most interesting uh, one to make it through to Q2 is Liam Lawson. I mean, a, a great performance in a in a pretty slow car to be honest yeah fantastic job from liam again and um, you know we've seen we had a great great weekend last weekend in zambors given the weather and all that happened there and he still pulled through the finish but uh yeah you know he got the whole weekend as we were talking about before he got to dial in the car at the practice sessions and to get into q2 that's a really solid result from him and, and going his second appearance in the car yeah, it's fantastic. And he starts 12th tomorrow, just one behind his uh, his teammate, Yuki Tsunoda. Uh, we lost out as well. Logan Sargent, Valtteri Bottas, Nico Hülkenberg, and then both of the Alpha Tori drivers. It looked for a second like Logan Sargent was going to do something like he did last week and make it into Q3. But unfortunately, it doesn't make it stick. His, his teammate does go through. But Logan Sargent, I'm, I'm starting to worry a little bit about whether he's going to be in Formula One next year. Yeah, it was a bit of a shame with Sargent. Like in Q1, we've seen him set in purple sectors behind his teammates yeah. and it kind of promising again to be into the top 10. But I didn't catch the end of it. He said something on team radio at the end of Q2. He went off at the last corner or he went wide or something. That's some sort of issue. So I'd say that's the reason why he dropped off in the end. But yeah, you know, considering his few mistakes, well, one of them wasn't his mistake last weekend. I think it's a, it's a bit of a worrying time for Sargent. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think ultimately... the. <laughs> Points mean money, and money means keeping your seat in Formula One. And yeah. so, I, 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 I mean, look, it's so difficult because he's young as well. He's obviously very talented to get into Formula One. And I hope that, you know, he can pull out a couple of points towards the end of the season. But it's going to be difficult for him at Monza tomorrow, starting at 15th, to, uh, to get out there and score any points. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, but let's move ahead now to the big one. I've still got a big smile on my face, Coyle, because I can't quite believe it. But we have Carlos Sainz on pole tomorrow. Max Verstappen starting behind him and Charles Leclerc in third. He's in a uh, Ferrari sandwich in Max Verstappen. But that was electric, that final qualifying session. Insanely good. Yeah, it, it, it always is a Monza, especially when it's, uh, when it's a Ferrari that's on top there. It's, it's incredible. But uh, yeah, it's fantastic work from Sainz. You know, like I said uh, earlier on, when Leclerc got the pole and then Verstappen got ahead of him, I thought, oh, this isn't going to be, this isn't going to be what we all wanted. But then Sainz came through and delivered that final lap and what an epic lap it was. Yeah. Just as well, we didn't mention as well uh, before, but uh, being under investigation, 
Thankfully, it was all cleared. <laughs> I was thinking of you the whole session when I man, the, <laughs> the stress I felt. Uh, so exactly, uh, it was they were under investigation because before their warm up lap, they were going too slowly, essentially, right? And which in theory can cause some traffic, and so they were under investigation. And I was convinced, or almost always, Colin, when we see it in a race or even in qualifying, under investigation, I'd say, what, 80% of the time ends up being a penalty of some sort. Yeah. But us Ferrari boys, we've got away with one somehow there. I'm not really sure how you can investigate something like that when it's a timing thing and, and get away with it. But we did. We did. Uh, and as you say, it was so exciting because Charles Leclerc comes across first, sends himself to pole. Max Verstappen comes across, sends himself to pole. And then who? My boy Carlos Sainz comes across and sends us off to pole. It was, it was amazing. Such a good um, session. Let's have a look who, uh, who else we've got going. So we'll have Carlos Sainz in first, Max second, Charles third. George Russell pulled out a great lap to start on the second row tomorrow from fourth position. What did you make of his qualifying and generally Mercedes today? Yeah, it was a fantastic effort from George in the end. Um, you know, there was no secret that Mercedes were struggling coming in to, into the weekend. Hamilton was struggling all through the, the sessions, the practice sessions, and Russell as well. So for Russell to get up in there and get on the second row of the grid, that was a, that was a great effort from him. Yeah, particularly particularly because, again, we knew the car was going to be uh, quick, the Mercedes car, but we don't expect it to be anywhere near as quick as the Red Bull. And we kind of had a feeling the Ferrari was going to be quite quick here as well. So, And you, you look where Hamilton is down in eighth. I think George has done a, a really, really good job there. Yeah. yeah, that's the funny thing with the Mercedes car at the minute. You know, it, it, like last weekend in Zandvoort, it was arguably second best to, to Red Bull. I know they qualified mm. out of position, but, you know, it's... A, it's a very funny car to have that W14. It just, it's like it kind of decides itself when it wants to perform. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's no point even trying to predict it because it just makes it up as it goes along. Sergio Perez starts in fifth. I mean, disappointing. Again, we say it very regularly, but that car is so quick. Maybe the Ferrari car is obviously very, very quick this this weekend as well to be up and about with Max. But you'd expect uh, you'd expect Sergio to be doing at least on the second row, right? Yeah, that's that's not going to be a, a good thing from Red Bull's point of view. You know, they'd want Sergio, like you said, up there in the second row in between the two Ferraris along with mm. the start at the worst. So then, you know, when it comes tomorrow to pit stops, you know, can leave Perez and let him go along and hopefully hold up the Ferraris. That's a common strategy at Monza. So yeah. hold up the editors. But like, I know there's only one car and the difference is only Russell, but... You know, he's still behind and he's still lacking coming into the race tomorrow. You know, he has to catch up now. And it's not good for the stats either, I don't think. Uh, F1's golden boy, Alex Albon, starts in sixth tomorrow. I mean, that Williams is really starting to look actually like a pretty good car. It feels like a midfield car, not a back-of-the-pack car anymore. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, I think the surprising thing with Williams was the fact that they were so quick last year at Zandvoort. Or, or not last year, my apologies. Uh, last weekend at Zandvoort. You know, that was a completely different track in yeah. terms of you know, Monza in terms of um, characteristics so to have them really fast there and then to come to Monza where maybe it was a bit more expected with their common uh, low down for setups that they use and and you know uh, characteristics of the car I, I think you know generally across the board in the last few races at Williams they've been very impressive definitely yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And, and particularly what Alex Albon was doing there, driving yeah. the team, is awesome. Uh, starting seventh is Oscar Piastri. Lewis Hamilton starts down in eighth. Lando Norris qualified behind his teammate uh, in ninth. And Fernando Alonso ends up uh, starting in tenth tomorrow. But I'll tell you what the main thing that's kind of shocked me about this qualify session, because we spoke about it a little bit in the preview. I spoke about it with Sam. I was not expecting... I. I Ferrari always do something at Monza because it's the Italian Grand Prix. I was not expecting them to have this good a car. Now, whether that translates into the race tomorrow is yet to be seen. But what do you think their realistic chances are of winning, Ferrari winning the race tomorrow? Uh, there, was a, there was a lot of talk over the weekend about Ferrari. Like you said, Monza is a very special weekend for them. They want to do the best that they can. Uh, there was a lot of talk that they've turned up their engines to pretty much the maximum potential. Wow. You know, going for the highest top speed and the best performance you can get at Monza. So, yeah, I think, you know, barring any reliability issues or incidents at the start, I think they, they could be in for a good shot. And you have to remember, for Sappens behind now, he's, he's behind another car. He's not on pole. It's going to be very difficult for him to get past with such a high speed. Mm -hmm. uh, Sappens, you know, we've we seen it with Ricardo in 21, you know, for Stappen, arguably the faster car, but couldn't find a way by him. Yeah. So, you know, it, I, I think if, if Sainz can hold on the opening lap and uh, things can keep going, you know, naturally, no problems with Ferrari. Yeah, I think they could be in a, a good position for a, a first and third or even a one-two if you're combined the way by. 
Oh, don't don't tickle me like that, Coylan. Don't tickle me with a one-two. My emotions can't no, deal with it. With the star, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look, it'll be it'll be absolutely fascinating because we've got the interest of Ferrari being on the front row at their home Grand Prix. We've got Max Verstappen who's looking to break the consecutive record. There is so much on this race tomorrow. The build-up, the tension is going to be huge and we are going to be following it all right here on On Track GP. We will be live, of course, for the race tomorrow, uh, the Monza Grand Prix. I'm very excited. Coylan, final thoughts about that qualifying session? Yeah, just fantastic. You know, as we, as we all said, I said before with, with Monza, you know, the qualifying is something else. And uh, I'm kind of glad in the way that they've been warned about it in previous years about this kind of slowing down and holding each other up. They didn't really do that this time and they just kind of went for it. So, yeah, it was really good fun to watch. And the, good the, to see the, it. the tires as well, before we go, you know, that that uh, I really like that. That mm. the hungry with the tire strategy. I think, again, that played in. You didn't know who was going to be where kind of again. Yeah, I really like it. I think I'm hoping that that's something that they can do long, long term is bring in. So that every every qualified session happens like that. So Q1 on the hards, Q2 on the mediums, and Q3 on the softs. I think it works really well. Kind of evens out the playing field, but equally leaves it a little bit less uh, unknown. But here we go. The race tomorrow. I'm super excited. Come and join us on On Track GP. But for now, that is all. The headline is Carlos Sainz is on pole. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>